Bradford. Let's speak to a social commentator and futurist and leadership speaker, Mal Fletcher. Good morning, Mal. Good to talk to you again. You're quite prolific on social media. I saw you on Twitter a few moments ago announcing that you were going to be on this show. Yes, I did. I do use social media. I think it's a great servant. We've just got to be careful it doesn't become the master. Is there a trouble, Mal, the problem, Mal, that we just don't understand this stuff yet, that it's moved so fast? We don't really get it yet or, or get how, uh, what sort of an effect this is having on our lives? I think there's a point there. I think also that um, the social media companies, because they're largely unregulated, are not required to issue some sort of warning. I mean, you think about things like the effect on cognition. You've got what we call dopamine addiction. Dopamine is a chemical associated with feelings of alertness and pleasure. A number of studies now are showing that every time we take to social media, we inject small doses of dopamine into our brains. It's that anticipation, you know, does somebody respond to what I've said? Did they like my photo? And many small doses of dopamine taken over time can have the same cumulative effect as a single large dose, and that can produce addiction. So when you think about things like that, and there are other cognitive effects we could talk about, it's no wonder that people are starting to ask, should there be some sort of health warning on the packaging, if you like? I mean, Facebook recently said that the answer to depression online, and there's research showing that online engagement causes or increases depression and anxiety in some people. Facebook said, look, the answer, if you're getting depressed because you're using Facebook, is to use more Facebook. And yes. if there was a drug company acknowledging that it contributes to some sort of mental health problem, and then it said, take even more of that drug and you'll be fine, I think there'd be a fiori. So we need to hold these companies to account. Would a health warning make any difference, though? I mean, the government are constantly telling us about things that are bad for us, and it seems to make very little difference at the end of the day. No, but I think there's a principle here, and that is that, um, you know, for a long time now, social media companies, and there have been great benefits with social media, which is why I use it. But one of the downsides is that these companies now behave on one hand like corporations. They lobby governments in the UK, US and other places using millions of pounds or dollars to make their point. Um, and on the other, they're saying, look, we're just free willing innovators. We're in a digital wild west. We're the young entrepreneurs. Well, they're not anymore. They're corporations. And they need to be held accountable as corporations. Until and unless we do that, we're going to continue to see, I think, many more people investing perhaps too much time in social media without any proper guidance. You're a, a, fu a futurist, among many other things, Mal. Here's a difficult one. Five years from now, where are we going to be? I mean, which social, there, there will be social emerging social media networks that we don't know about. We know that the young have, have long since uh, left Facebook and they're using other things, aren't they? Uh, Snapchat and so on. I wonder how we'll be communicating uh, five, ten years down the line. Well, of course, that's the $100 million question. If somebody knew that, they'd invent it today and make a lot of money. But I think one of the things that's on the, on the horizon is what we're calling sociable media, as distinct from social media. Sociable media is where we use haptic technology that fools the human senses. You know, we used to be able to fool, fool sight and sound and touch, which is where, you know, 3D gaming and interactive gaming came in. But now we're able to, you know, we're developing technologies that will fool the sense of taste and smell as well, which means that you could be represented by a 3D avatar online placed in an environment that you're not really in, but feeling like you're actually having a cup of coffee, coffee with somebody um, via this technology. It's fully haptic, sociable media so that people are not interacting just with text anymore. They're doing it in an immersive experience. That's one possibility. for. The I don't think I even even then, understand that, but it sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'm not sure that any of us will fully appreciate what it can do until we're there. But the point is that even then, you know, there's going to need to be some sort of uh, overt warning, if not warning, then at least some notification that spending too much time with this stuff can actually do you damage in in your relationships, but certainly in the way you think. Really interesting to talk to you as always, Mal. Thank you very much for being there this morning uh, as leadership uh, expert, commentator and uh, futurist, Mal Fletcher.